Now, you know I'm going to say it. You know I have to say it. I'm obligated to say it. And deep down, you want me to say it. And it's not a question of if I'm going to say it. It's how soon and how many times. Bears football! Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Listen. Let's start with this. NFL. Major TV network. I beg you. I implore you. I plead with you. I pray to you. Stop putting Bears football in prime time and boring the brakes off of millions of viewers and keeping them up till midnight on a Sunday night. For Christ's sakes. Stop doing this. You want them to be a thing because they're a big market. And then you ignore the consistent history of this team, this organization, in these spots in the recent years. Why, oh why, do you subject everybody to this? Just let me endure this misery at one o'clock in the afternoon, so that way, I've got other stuff I could do afterwards. I can go to the driving range. I maybe sneak in a quick nine holes. I could do some yard work, some homework, some anything other than having to stay up till fucking midnight for the goddamn shit show. And what a shit show it was. And it feels kind of odd going into this game, knowing that the Texans are the better team, expecting the Texans to win. In my case as well, picking the Texans to win this game. And then the Bears have the ball with under two minutes to go, only down six, with technically a chance to win this game. I'll say this for the Houston Texans. I think they're legit, and I think they're going to be a real threat. But this is not the type of victory that they should be doing backflips for. You are clearly one or even two levels above the Bears. And you won by six points at home in prime time against Bears football, for God's sakes. That is nothing to fucking celebrate other than the fact that you're 2-0 now. And that's not nothing. Because history is pretty strong about teams that start off 2-0 making the playoffs. But damn, this is not one to feel good about. And that's... I wonder, is it is there something in Houston, like they, they serve up generous portions of cock gobbler that the Bears offensive line was just addicted to the past 24 hours? Well, I don't know if they were addicted to in the past 24 hours, but the offensive line, in particular the interior, sure was addicted to Houston Texans cock gobbler for three plus hours on Sunday night. Now, here's what I gotta say. For all those that are bitching about Ryan Poles failing to address the offensive line, stop it, stop it, stop it. I demand accuracy in our bitching and griping and critiquing and criticism. No, no, no. It's inaccurate to say Ryan Poles did not address the offensive line. It is accurate to say, and actually much worse because it speaks to a higher level of incompetence, that he thought signing Coleman Shelton, who exactly, and trading a mid-round pick for Ryan Bates was effectively addressing the interior of the offensive line. That's the problem, folks. You want to bitch about anything, bitch about that. Then bitch about why the fuck Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, would have a job going into week three. Because you look at this unit right now, they can't pick up basic stunts. They're out of position. They're blocking nobody down the field. Like there's one clip showing Nate Davis and Tevin Jenkins not blocking any fucking buddy. I don't care what type of excuse he made. It's just a terrible look. They're not running max protect. You know, I think Olin Cruz tweeted it during the game talking about stop running silent count because the offensive tackles are late. Yeah, all this shit, right? That's dumb fucking coaching. 
You've got a GM who is a former failed offensive lineman, at least in terms of an NFL aspect. He wasn't good enough to cut the mustard. And gee, what do you know? He apparently can't evaluate the fucking offensive line position as a general manager. Combine that with fucking terrible coaching, a terrible scheme. It's the Wizard Waldron show. Oh boy. Waldron is Getsy. Getsy is Waldron. I mean, honestly, does it look any fucking different? Bunch of predictable ass runs on first down and second down, putting you in third and long and putting you in a bad spot. Like, who am I describing there? Am I describing Gutless Getsy or the Wizard Waldron? You fucking tell me. Because right now, I can't tell the fucking difference. What's the identity of this offense? What are you trying to do? Early on in the game, even when Coleman Shelton and Nate Davis were eating all types of cock gobbler, that's the word of the day, folks, cock gobbler, because they gobbled it up all game long. And I'm sure PFF will still somehow rate these two guys in like the 60s because they just make fucking shit up at this point. Like, Caleb actually looked okay in the first half. Of course, they were playing everything really close chicken shit to the vest, in part because the offensive line can't block to save their fucking lives and pass protection. And they're getting mollywopped to the tune of giving up seven sacks. And shit, that was the Houston Texans being kind. They should have blitzed every fucking obvious passing situation. They probably could have finished this game with 15 sacks. It was that bad, folks. It was that bad. But every time you turn around, it's trying to make DeAndre Swift a fucking thing. Like seriously at this point, how could Khalil Herbert or Roshan Johnson be any worse? I would argue they would have to be better. You're trying to make a square peg and DeAndre Swift fit into a round hole and it doesn't fucking work. You're trying to make him a between the tackles runner and that's not really who the fuck he is. It just, it just all of this shit is stupid. Stupid, stupid, fucking stupid, it's Bears football! For Christ's sakes, the running back you gave, what, eight, nine million dollars for the next couple of years had 1.3 yards per carry on 14 carries. 14 carries, 18 yards. He averaged one yard for, per carry, basically, which is same as the number of holding penalties that were called on DeAndre Swift tonight. There's something fucking wrong here, folks. Overreaction my ass. One game is a fluke. Two is a trend. And like committed to running the same way in the same situations. Not mixing it up. Bad blocking scheme. Like you fucking name it. And then you get to the second half and then the pressure starts to ratchet up because there's actually a chance to win this game somehow, some fucking way. And then you put yourself, your quarterback in a bad spot, third and long, and he underthrows DJ Moore by three yards, or however you want to put it, right? I can sit there and criticize DJ Moore because if you're real, like, big-time wide receiver one that just got paid, which you definitely just got paid, you need to find a way to make that play or at a minimum make sure that the corner doesn't pick it off. Now that said, it was third and 16. I can live with that Caleb Williams pick. It was like a shorter arm pun. It wasn't that huge in the grand scheme of things and I want to see him take some fucking chances. So that first pick, that's okay. But that second pick was god awful. Now again, it doesn't help when his shit is getting pushed into his face because the fucking O-line just can't hold up for shit and can't block any fucking buddy. But he makes a spectacular play to escape. Just run for a few yards, slide, and live for the next play, Caleb. Don't sit there and try to throw this freaking touch pass on the move to Cole Komet that even if he catches it, it's really not going to go anywhere. And meanwhile, you're throwing over three defenders. That's just a really, really bad play. You're pulling a Levis damn near almost. Like, you, you just can't do that. And the crazy thing is, Caleb throws two picks tonight. Statistically, you look at him, he says he's 23 of 37 for 174 yards. Oh, my. 
he showed progress, and in some respects he did. He certainly looked better in the first half of this game, but there are concerns now about the deep ball accuracy because it was really bad tonight. It's hard, though, to criticize him about executing within structure because there were a couple of times when there actually was structure, he did execute within it, but so often the structure was not structured at all, so how the fuck can he execute within structure? And to those that are going to want to sit there and put the positive spin on it and say, well, the defense was good tonight. Okay, so fucking what? So what? Their defense was good tonight and they fucking lost. In two games, they've scored one offensive touchdown. Caleb has zero touchdown zero touchdown passes. What the fuck are you talking about? All these weapons we're talking about here. DJ Moore, where's the big plays? Keenan Allen, well, of course, it's Keenan Allen, so he's in street clothes. Roma Dunze was a ninth overall pick. He had two catches tonight, and one of them came very late in the game. Cole Komet, who's supposed to be like a top 10 tight end in the league, sit there and had freaking zero targets at halftime. Zero. Zero! Stop trying to make Gerald Everett a goddamn thing! Stop throwing bubble screens to a tight end and having your small ass wide receivers block for him. And it goes fucking nowhere. And you look at the last drive. Caleb, beautiful play. Roma Dunze makes a play. You got some momentum now. Shit, it's 19 to 13. You got a chance. And then you throw it to Gerald Everett and he fucking drops it. You can criticize Caleb about some things in these first two games. That's true. But what you can't criticize him for is Roma Dunze. Caleb throws a beautiful fade in the first half where only Rome can catch it. And it goes through Dunze's hands. Can't happen. Just like Keenan Allen last week at the touchdown drop. These things can't happen. He's had multiple TDs drop now. Come on, guys. But then the master stroke is fucking Eber flush. Goddamn throwing the challenge flag twice on two obvious don't fucking challenge those plays. Who's telling you to challenge these? Why are you fucking challenging these? And then you're costing your team challenges and timeouts. And that second challenge on Spider-Man's non-pick is so clearly obvious. It fucking hit the ball and it moved around. It wasn't control. There's no way that was in God's green earth that that was going to fucking get overturned and be called an INT. Bit you in the ass later when you didn't have a timeout that you probably needed because you burned it on a stupid fucking challenge. Just all around. The interior offensive line sucked. Gee, wonder who could have seen that coming. Everybody did. No reason to pay DeAndre Swift big money. Why would you do that? Gee, imagine that. The defense is good, but it's certainly not dominant. Well, the defense is good. Okay, so fucking what? They should be good. They better be good because otherwise then, at what point in time do you question what purpose does Matt Eberflus serve? What does he do around here? What the fuck up clock management? The fuck up the challenges? Like what else you got? And now the Bears will have to play the Colts who are sitting at 0-2 and they're going to be desperate for a win. So that's not going to be fucking easy. It just can't be this hard to play competent offensive football. I'm not asking even at this moment for great offensive football. But you spent a lot to invest in skill position players. And then you don't find ways to properly utilize those skill position players. What the fuck are we doing here? So once again, I ask the NFL, please, for the love of God, until shown otherwise, stop putting Bears football in prime time, you sadistic bastards.